On this episode of Crossing the Streams, I'd love to welcome Tom, otherwise known as Astro Canuck. Welcome, Tom. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing awesome. I'm doing tremendous. Um, so much better now that it's the weekend, and I'm here with you, man. Well, thank you for for deciding to join me on on this uh, episode and wonderful journey through your content. Uh, for those that don't know who you are and what you do, uh, would you mind giving a quick explanation of Astro Canuck as a channel and community? Yeah, not a problem. Uh, yeah, my, as more and more said, my name is Tom. I am the Astro Canuck. It is always my pleasure to share my love of astronomy with you first and foremost. And I will do that by taking live images of outer space. I have been doing this for the past couple of years almost on, on Twitch. And I started dabbling into the Lego scene almost, ooh, let's say, a little over a year ago now. And it has kind of blossomed into what we do today. But a lot of talk about astronomy, uh, astrophotography, as well as something like the latest rocket launches will cover those kinds of deals and just have a lot of fun on stream. It's what I enjoy doing and always happy to be to be sharing these these moments in in space, getting you to look up at the sky rather than always down at your phones, although we're on phones right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I what I think is so unique about what you do is this uh, coverage of astronomy, astrophotography how the whole thing works. Uh, it, it's pretty incredible. I, I can't think of many people who even really focus on that on Twitch, which really makes makes your channel stand out. Would you mind talking a bit about how you got into it and, and how it became the interest that it is for you today? Yeah, no problem. I mean, it's there are a few people who do this on, on Twitch, and I feel like what I like to do is to try to take it to a little bit more of that next level that makes it more engaging. Because astrophotography on the face of it can be pretty cool, but like the first little images that you get from the from your camera into the telescope, they don't always look that great. There's some processing that has to be done. In that regard, what I like to do is to try to do live images and stack them to make them more interesting. Um, using a color camera was what I started off with, so you could actually see space in color because... If you look at it up at the sky through a telescope, most often you're not going to really see much color because our meat cameras, our eyeballs, they're not designed to process that kind of information uh, unless you have like a really large telescope. But I, I was, where did I start off with this? I mean, this goes back to being a kid and enjoying the images that you'd see from the Hubble Space Telescope and images in magazines and always wondering, is that what space looks like? And incidentally, a lot of the Hubble images, that's the structure of the objects, but that's not the real color. It's like a modified color palette with Hubble. And now most notably with the James Webb Space Telescope, bringing in those new images, these new views of the cosmos we've never had before. Uh, I had like a telescope years and years ago, back in the late 90s. My brother and I had one. And it was just looking at the two of the great comets that passed by in the late 90s, uh, Hale-Bopp and Heakotake which to a naked eye comet is incredible. And we really haven't had one of those in a while, but that was kind of where the, the whole love of a telescope came through. Fast forward a couple decades and I ended up going to a star party, which is just people getting together in a field, in a dark sky, bringing out a whole bunch of different telescopes. You can look up at the different objects. People look at the moon. Some people look at planets, star clusters. And that really, it really hooked me when I put my phone up to the, up to the eyepiece and took a picture of the moon. And from that point, it's like, I want to show more people. I love, I love that. that. That's so you've been doing this for many, many years, literally decades. What, what made you decide one day to take this love of astronomy and astrophotography and just put it on Twitch? It funny enough, it didn't start on Twitch. Um, mm. <clears throat> it was just using, just sharing the video on on Facebook. I thought I was going to put my camera up to the eyepiece and move the telescope around, take pictures, and talk about it. Clearly, it didn't work the very first time around, and nothing went right. the The camera wouldn't focus on the telescope, so I had to just look at the screen. It was very higgledy piggledy. So 
<laughs> I figured there's got to be something else we can do. But there, I was very limited. I was limited on Facebook. So it was kind of quickly, what can we do over on Twitch? And there's so much more that we can do over here. Mm -hmm. uh, better engagement with people. So it was listening to some other people who were doing something similar on Twitch and figuring maybe this is something I can do. And this was back in like 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we all started working from home and I had this whole telescope set up. I figured, can I make this work on Twitch as well? Can we at least try it out, see what we can do? Yeah. Um, and everything started off like super slow because I wasn't playing video games. It was some, <laughs> some dude just sitting in his kitchen and having his telescope outside and trying to take images of stars. It's been quite a different journey doing this and like technology changes. It was one of the, it was quite literally one of those things. Let's see how this goes. You know, just being able to share these moments with people and, and give a, a, a more focused look, something also something different as well on Twitch. Uh, early on, you were saying there were other people doing this. Were, were there specific uh, creators that you really looked to to kind of help guide you on this particular type of content? Was there some mentors that you had as you were getting started, or were, was it more passive in terms of how you tried to get involved with doing this specific kind of content on Twitch? Uh, the original, the guy who had started off his uh, econ Greg, and mm -hmm. he's out in Atlanta, Georgia. I was in the United Kingdom at the time. Uh, I've been living in the UK for 10 years with my wife, and we just recently moved back to Canada about a year ago now. So we, him and I were in two different time zones. So I was able to get a few different targets. He would have some uh, different nights to, to be able to view. So we're on like the split schedule just to be able to offer maybe like 18 straight hours of astronomy, if possible, especially in the winter, at least for us in the Northern hemisphere. And you know, he was, he was all for it. And anybody else I see trying to do starting off with astrophotography on Twitch, I'm all for that as well. I mean, it is very, it's very focused. There isn't a great way to search for it on Twitch. There isn't like a, <laughs> there isn't a space, there isn't an astronomy um, category right now to, to look right. for all of this. Nor do people always know that things like this, even like Lego building as well. Like I saw someone, a tweet a while back, someone who's excited about this new set. And it's like, yo, do they even stream Lego on Twitch? And mm -hmm. everybody's like, there's like comments galore. So I still feel that there is still an infancy in everything and that just not everybody's familiar with what is available out here. You know, it wasn't until I discovered your channel that I, I wasn't really familiar with this sort of thing on Twitch. Is there any particular ways that you search for other people who do this too? Or how would one even be able to find it since there's no good tags that exist for, for this kind of thing? It has it has almost quite literally been the word of mouth and raid, like raiding out to different different communities. Mm -hmm. um, and I see there's like I searched for I was I, I feel very fortunate with the name that I have. Uh, it's not often you, you pick your nickname and it sticks. And I just figured, okay, let's try, let's just go with Astro Canuck, see what happens. Yeah. And I, I started looking for some different Astro names on Twitch. Funny enough, a lot of them don't have anything to do with astronomy. <laughs> is that is that just because they like the word is that how possibly. it goes yeah possibly so and um yeah it is it has been like just chatting with different people and just kind of spreading the word around and you kind of got to use like the other social media channels to start bringing other people in yeah. at least let them know here's what we're doing it's not a video game channel there was there was a stream review that was that goes on and I ended up on that channel one day. This is again still back in the United Kingdom, and they were looking at the page. And as soon as he looked at, it, he was talking about other people before. They had like some space scene, not like a real image of space, just like some kind of generic nebula. Mm -hmm. And he immediately, immediately started uh, harping on about that. He's like, "Ugh, more more space. I don't like space." Wow. And I'm thinking, 
I'm thinking, oh no, I'm like four, I'm like four, four streams away from this review. I'm like, oh, he's gonna look at this and <laughs> instantly. So there was that he looked at it the instant he's like, oh, here we go, more galaxies. And I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> like, here we go. Not until the, uh, he started reading up about what the stream was about. And then I was chatting in, the, in there as well, just mentioned that no, these are pictures that I take of space. Yeah. The whole mood changed. And he's like, what? You, you did this? Like, yeah. You, you didn't even realize that this was possible. And because we figure you look at pictures of space, you think it has to be a multi billion dollar telescope setup that NASA has launched. But really, you can get by with doing astrophotography with uh, like a modest kind of setup, even with your phone. You got a cell phone, yeah. you can take images of space. Like you can sit it on a stand, put it on a stand like this. Most phones have at least a 30 second timer pointed up to the sky. There you go. I like how it's so accessible these days, right? Because there was a time where, you know, a, a phone wouldn't be able to do that. And now, now that we can, uh, anyone can, I mean, it's like streaming. It used to be so much harder to stream, but if you have even an entry level, like smartphone, you could use that as a camera to you know take photos of space to take use it as a as a as a webcam for your stream there it's yeah. it's so accessible now i think that uh, your your story your story about the stream review is wonderful because i have noticed i can think of like a couple people that i've met on twitch who just have space or astro or cosmos in the name or something like that yeah. has nothing to do with with uh, any kind of astronomy or anything along those lines or space actually to to space as an actual piece of the content. So I can see why it's hard to find other people. Uh, if 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 you if you could do or recommend any particular tag specifically for Twitch, what would you recommend to help grow that community on the platform? Oh, I either space or astronomy. Because there are so many other, there's some tremendous science communicators on Twitch, and it's just it's it's more of it's, it's finding it out. I know, like there's the science and tech channel, right? And not to knock people who have been using it for coding, it just seems like a lot of people are almost reluctant to go in there because, like, oh, here comes another coder, so right? Just sitting at their computer, wondering why this doesn't work, and they're going through eight thousand lines of code. So it's try to find even I th I don't think there's going to be like a focused space or any kind of channel like that, but at least a tag, like how things got uh, with brick building, right. or at least that tag was added recently and just yeah. being able to search that, that other category. Yeah. So I think even like my, my kingdom for an astronomy tag, you know, TwitchCon Amsterdam is, is going on right now. And, uh, I was listening to, to the opening speeches for that. And uh, they had mentioned this previously, but they reinforced it today. They they are adding the ability to do custom tags very soon. So I did see that starting to come through. So I didn't know when that was going to be rolled out, if that was a genuine feature that they're going to go with, or was it going to just kind of be like yeah. somebody would have access to it? Yeah, it's so uh, they didn't give a date, but it's it's coming along with expanding the number of tags to 10. So mm -hmm. uh I, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for for you and people who do similar content to hopefully find each other more, uh, m much like brick building, much like brick building uh, needed at least a tag. At least this will hopefully kickstart some connections between, you know, yourself, other people who create the content, as well as people who are actually looking to find more of that sort of thing on Twitch. Yeah, definitely, because that has been, and like some people use the discoverability as a crutch, and other people generally have this this gripe with um, with not being able to find someone. Yeah, but I think still right now the best way is to start is just at the end of the stream rating out to someone you haven't really said hello to before. You never know who is going to resonate with that streamer with that next the next stream you pass off to. Yeah, and then it can snowball from there. Yeah, you know, just and that's why I say before is that everybody who is on Twitch, uh, you're sharing what you love, and that passion can be felt through. There's not many things that you can kind of get 
you know, through this piece of plastic that we're all looking at right now, <laughs> but it's yeah. the, uh, it, it's knowing that what people are doing is they enjoy what they are presenting and they, this is what they're not just doing it for some kind of grind, but yeah. this is what you love to do. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I think that uh, that's lost on a lot of people who get on Twitch and start streaming themselves. Uh, you know, I don't even really care about what the initial reasons are, but I think ultimately the end goal, or rather at least the, like the, the goal that should be pushing people forward when they, they make content is, are you making something that you're really into that you really love or that you have, have some kind of passion about? I mean, with, with you, it's astronomy, you know, as well as Lego, you know, part, crossing the streams for me is, is just getting to know other creators and kind of figuring out, uh, what makes them them do what they do or, you know, what what motivates and inspires them to make content, which brings me to uh, the Lego side of things. So you 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 do Lego Sunday mornings on your channel. Yeah. Tell me about your history with Lego and what eventually brought you to streaming it on your channel. Uh, oh, my. Well, it goes right back to like my parents buying me a few lego bricks just to keep me occupied yeah uh, i have a couple of the like the the old sets in my in my closet right now that i want to do like a kind of a throwback uh building stream but it's also finding all the pieces but it has been a lifelong uh, obsession with lego and there was a even like there i wouldn't even say it was a much of a drought but i felt like there was that that you know, Lego has had its ups and downs and this had um, some good sets and some questionable fun sets, but there's always been that, that relaxing time you can have building a set and just kind of zoning out. And it wasn't until it was, I started seeing more space sets become available and we had started kind of fast forward into the streaming days. Yeah. I figured would, would the community actually like to see this? Would anybody be interested? This was my naivety into how kind of popular brick building had become on, yeah. uh, on Twitch. And I'm thinking, okay, let's give it a shot. Let's just see what people are, what, what, what will they think? All right, let's 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 put this goal up for the, the channel points. Mm -hmm. Will enough people say yes? And if so, I'll pick up the International Space Station. And it was probably maybe a week worth of streaming. And everybody filled up that goal. So like, okay, fine, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's have it. Let's, let's go. So I got the International Space Station. I don't know if mm -hmm. you can see it up here. And I figured, okay, let's build it. it how long can it take? It probably right. won't take that long. Probably get like a couple hours. Um, <laughs> famous last words. Yep. <laughs> uh, eight, eight and a half hours later, I finished <laughs> building. I was thinking, oh my goodness. <laughs> like... <laughs> Why does it take so long? And then I realized afterward, uh, watching things back, I'm like, I never really shut up during the, the stream. So it's like, okay, let's maybe turn this into a multi-part kind of thing. And we had moved on to another goal, which is going to be the Saturn V rocket, which was almost double, the, more than double the size of the of this of the ISS set. Yeah, I'm like, oh, it's gonna take a while. This all happened during a move, during moving from the United Kingdom back to Canada. So there's kind of that hold on the brick building. There's a hold on the, the streams altogether right. as I moved across the Atlantic. And it was, the, the, it was still the, the, the excitement was still there. Like people yeah. were still saying, okay, now you're, you're, you're there. Do you have, you got the set? Are you going to build it? Like, yeah, let's go. Let's start with a, a section at a time. And I think it was maybe five street, five Sundays of building the Saturn V rocket. From that point, it was okay. Well, let's, you know, we'll, we'll continue this on. It was going to be like maybe two builds, these two uh, space based Lego sets. And I figured, well, why not try it again? Let's see if doing something else. And I think the next one may have been a scout trooper helmet just to try something with, uh, with Star Wars because I love Star Wars. I grew up on Star Wars. <laughs> It's just one. It's it was. It felt and it ended up being very organic uh, how this all occurred. And I figured, all right, let's next Sunday we'll build another set. We'll kind of keep this going and just chill out on a Sunday afternoon or a Sunday morning wherever wherever people are tuning in from. 
it was just this whole thing I never really planned on. I just wanted to try something out with building a space-based Lego set and be kind of cool. Maybe we'd have like one set on the, on the shelf behind and almost like over a year later, like here we are with uh, like so many other sets that we built. <laughs> and now, now trying to finish the home alone set uh, in July, which is going fairly slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, I, it's been a year of building Lego on stream every Sunday How has that fit with the rest of your content, being someone who also focuses on something uh, that is not completely unrelated, because there's some awesome space-themed sets in general, but how how does kind of meshing those two different interests together uh, work on your channel, and how, how have you felt about doing that? I was concerned at first, because I was moving, like, almost like completely the opposite side, not that there's like sides of the astronomy of what I was building this whole channel upon. And now here I am building Lego sets on the weekend. Right. But it was also an opportunity to reach out and possibly find another corner of Twitch that people would be interested in. And then realizing how much cross there is between people who will build a Lego set who are fans of Lego and are also spending that money on telescopes. So it kind of, um, it's that, that innate wonder of, uh, that, that childhood wonder and the childhood innocence of enjoying building a Lego set, but also looking up at the sky. And I feel like this is an interesting combination that's kind of occurred here. When, when I think about it, the crossover or the, the overlap rather is, is far more, apparent than one would think it (laughs) at first you know i've lurked in a number of your streams i've hung out in a number of them and and there's definitely a lot of people who will hang out for one and come back for the other and and i mean like any 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 good community people are there for not just the content they're there for the person they're there for for the people that hang out in the channel and uh i think that uh, it, it's it's pretty spectacular how you've been able to take those two interests and blend them together. That is that is uniquely something uh, that you can't really find anywhere else on on Twitch. Is there anything that you want to incorporate as well into your content that you haven't yet done uh, that would also probably be another step, kind of away from from the Lego and the astronomy content? Hmm. Right now, I I don't know. Um, I think that's all my budget could take. <laughs> Either <laughs> using it on um, on Lego or on, on on astronomy. And right now, for astronomy uh, kit, it's been a while before, since there has been a lot of supplies because there's always been a supply chain issues, and a lot of these components require a bunch of different communities to work together to build. A certain device so i think it is uh, no gundam okay <laughs> it's not supercomputers comment of gundam that one is so close to what i what i enjoy like tra- like i grew up with the trick with transformers and yeah the look of the of the gundam sets and just how detailed those ones can be i would love to add that in but i think that would just need to be a, a completely personal thing that mm-hmm. i would enjoy off off the stream Mm-hmm. because i'm looking at some of these <laughs> sets and it's like oh that's so cool it's yeah. also that's also like another telescope um <laughs> <laughs> yeah watching people build them and how much um like filing down the pieces and being like really really precise and like this is exactly what i i, I used to build i would build some like model cars nothing nothing great <laughs> when I, like, <laughs> my, my, my later teen years and it was like, this is fun. I enjoy doing this. And then yeah. I'd stopped and just looking at the, the, how to build, like building your own action figure. Yeah. Seems kind of cool on the face. of It was like, I, I don't want to sit there with a file because I'll be way too fussy. Oh yeah. With how all, all of the, the pieces work. Awesome on the face of it. It looks absolutely tremendous. I'm <laughs> satisfied <laughs> to a degree yeah. with the, like the masterpiece transformers. At least yeah. that, that will satisfy what, what, like, how, how how much things have changed from being as a kid 
to like I'll use the Transformers as, as the example where the arms are just up and down, mm-hmm. and that was it. it was really easy to, to to shift them. And then now there's all these articulated points, and it's just like how it was in the cartoons. And yep. now we got Lego Optimus Prime, and it's just yeah. everything is like the kid in me is going absolutely bonkers right now. Oh yeah, I've had the same experience. <laughs> <laughs> So getting started on streaming, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, what what do you think has changed the most in terms of how you approach content creation and and, uh, what it means to be a streamer now that you've been at it for a few years? Oh, it means being trying to be as dynamic as possible because you can have something planned for the stream unless there's someone moderating you um (laughs) things can go ridiculously off the rails and there have been times when i'm like okay let's do let's talk about this let's talk about this event that's happened in space and we'll talk about it for like five minutes and then all these other questions come up and i'm happy to talk about this and chat about uh someone who's just who's just starting into astronomy Mm -hmm. it's just trying to be diverse as possible and you know not being afraid to you know traverse down this weird little avenue because you don't know where things are going to go and you know it's kind of ended up meeting some interesting people which is you wouldn't think about it that um, a question can kind of lead you down this way but people be like messaging others and sometimes say hey we're talking about this um you like this right and it's just being able to be as dynamic as you can and going with the flow like i try to be i'm not rigid at all what we do on the stream like it can be a Lego. We we've done uh, Lego streams, kind of rolling into astronomy. We have done just some just just chatting streams, rolling into astrophotography. So it is just being able to realize that things aren't going to go to plan. Always someone's going to throw some spanner in the works, and you just kind of got to go with it. Also, realize just realizing that you need to be very very critical on yourself, which I think there are some people you watch that don't always look inward all the time and like it's it's hard it is very difficult to do that because you don't want to pick out your you you know you don't want to notice all the the, the flaws that you have like mine the worst thing was almost every other word out of my mouth when i started was um always with the just so much um uh the uh, uh and so much like something what could i do what can how can i try to mitigate that the simplest thing, the simplest little tip that I had was just to close your mouth when you're finished talking until yeah. the next, um, d- dang it. There it goes. <laughs> it's, it's not, pr- I'm not perfect. My goodness. Um, I need a counter. Ah, yes. Kidding. That's, a, yeah, that, that's it. You need a little ding whenever <laughs> that pops up. So it's just trying to better yourself as best as you can even if it's just a little little steps forward being dynamic as possible when you uh it's funny that you bring that up because i edit all of these recordings uh, more heavily nowadays because i i've fell into a groove of it but um and like are the two words that i even find myself doing a lot when i'm on on the show or streaming and Thank you for pointing out that that's a thing that people do. I won't name names, but on previous episodes, I've also had to edit out a lot of ums and, and likes. And the third one for me is, you know, I, I do, you know, sometimes. And when I when I talk, that's something I'm very mindful of. Do you do you encourage others to actually listen to their their VODs uh, to address this or how would how would you recommend someone deal with that who notices it as a problem i think oh it's one of those things unless you are going to to do that that in the looking inward and thinking what can i do to help improve right. that kind of mentioning it, it it's it, it can be all, it, it can almost be a touchy subject for some people because maybe they don't even notice that that it's happening yeah. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, why are you picking on me for this? Why is this just one thing you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna pull apart? It's like it's not really pulling apart. There's just 
one little thing to do to improve the broadcasting and right. improve what you do on here and just have people. It's it, it's me sitting in front of this camera talking with people in chat and just enjoying the time here. Yeah. Hopefully everybody else enjoys the time as well. Yeah. But again, it's unless you're looking, you're willing to look inward. It's kind of difficult unless people are almost taking the Mickey out of you in a friendly way mm -hmm. that you're not going to notice that yeah. it may just be one of those things that is just, just become the natural pattern of speech. I know I finish off with the word that a lot, and I've been trying to try to quell that. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> it's like, what I'm talking and realizing that what I'm talking about is sometimes maybe I'm pointing to an object, but you don't always see my hands. I think I, I think that it's great that you are calling this out and it would be the caveat of if if you don't care about that, then don't worry about it. But definitely if you are someone who wants to improve the quality of your stream and your broadcast, or you're really looking to do something with your Twitch channel or your YouTube channel, it's certainly something to think about, right? It's important. Like you said, it's a small thing you can do to improve the quality of the broadcast or the VOD, whatever it might be, or in this case, a podcast, right? And so I think, I think that's a perfectly valid thing to point out. And anyone who wants to just bring up the quality of your, your broadcast that's certainly something that is important. Uh, I still will sometimes, not every time, pull up a stream and just leave the VOD up in the background while I work on something and listen to how I talk to my my viewers and explain how I do something or just the speech that comes out of my mouth. And like I said, I've 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 found all my my things, which are occasional ums, likes, and you knows. Sometimes I find that I actually like I I really prolong my sentences because I could see the gears turning in my own head because I'm trying to figure out how to explain something to chat. So I realize I'm talking at maybe like three quarters speed. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, those are those are all wonderful points. Is there something you would have told yourself as you were getting into streaming something that you wish you had known earlier? that's that what would i want to tell myself like two years ago yeah um that by this time by july well let's see by your 41st birthday 42nd birthday you'd be completely bald by choice <laughs> i'd be like no i wouldn't do that <laughs> If, if anything, that's kind of come out of streaming. It's just also without losing dignity, not be afraid to poke fun at yourself, but also yeah. just to put yourself out there. Because instantly, as soon as we're, you're, you're hitting that live button, you're you're out there. You're laying a good portion of your of your life out on the on the internet. Mm. So it's try not to be afraid as well that. Be fearless in this adventure because you're going to have more fun. It's like, don't worry too much about what everything looks like. I think it's just mo most often than not, people are going to come for the person. They're not going to be like, oh, hey, that stream looks cool. He has a he has a Christmas wreath or he's got a R2-D2 behind him. Yeah, look, at all the, <laughs> look at all the PlayStation games. I want to. I want to look at those PlayStation games. Yeah. No, they come for the for the person that's on the screen, for the voice that's coming out of the other end, which is also another thing is kind of listening to what you how you speak. Because if it's something can, you can carry on a conversation, you can flow well, then people will enjoy hanging out. Yeah. So there's conversation that can that can spill off from what you're what you're rambling on about half the time i don't listen to myself and then chat will ask me a question it's like <laughs> what did i say <laughs> it's one of those those things when you're you're in it 
you tend to go on tangents or you go in a completely different direction, which is totally fine. I think that's what's really interesting about engaging with people live is what conversations come out of it. I like that you said to not be afraid to put yourself out there because that's really what, in my opinion, makes a successful broadcast, right? Or a successful channel is really seeing the the personality of the person who's out there doing the thing. What other things do you feel like would make a successful streamer? All the RGB. No. Um, <laughs> it is, it, it's honestly, it is, it's got to be sharing what you love. I keep coming back to this so often mm-hmm. is that people have their, their guard up so much more now. And they can tell when you're being absolutely like disingenuous with everything that you do. And you are in this for like the wrong reasons. And it, you know, a lot of people, some kids, you ask them what they want to be when they grow up. I want to be a YouTube star. <laughs> yeah. It, like, do you realize how ridiculously difficult that can be? You are, there are hundreds of thousands of billions of different YouTube channels and Twitch channels out there. It could be, it is incredibly daunting. So it is just that, uh, uh, again, just being honest with uh, with yourself and then just try to be as genuine as possible. And people will pick up on that. It'll resonate with them. It will be the, you're, you're not giving, you're not giving a lip service. You are being as honest as you can with everybody. Not with you know, allowing this focused amount like people don't know that i'm not wearing socks right now <laughs> it's, you don't need to know everything right <laughs> i love that i think that when anyone watches a stream they if they listen closely or just are in a channel long enough it's always been my experience that i can kind of tell when someone isn't really either feeling it or enjoying what they're doing or having very much fun. I can tell when they're not being as sincere as they could be. People are very sensitive to that. And I think a lot of creators forget it at times, or they're so focused on being the next Twitch star or really pushing those numbers up that they're, they're going down a path that doesn't really align with who they are is as a person what do you what do you think you would say to someone who is doing that how would you give them that insight to be more sincere like i said people are going to smell bs a mile away you are you're being as honest about yourself to yourself people are going to pick up on that and you know what Sometimes it's just in terms of streaming, it may not work. And, you know, there are, there have been times when I like, you know, I think this may not be the thing to do. And it was very early on. I'm thinking, okay, I have like, not again, not obsessing about numbers because I think that's what is, there's too much of an emphasis put on numbers. However, Twitch tries to, it kind of somehow ends up being this numbers game where the person with the most viewers is the most successful. And I don't think that's the case. I have watched streams with thousands of people in there and chat can be going a mile a minute. Nobody's message can be read. Nobody's Mm -hmm. message is being read. And I feel like, how are you making, how are you building this community? I also wonder where, where was that, 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 that tipping point for when they reached that amount of people, but not to dwell on it because I can't compare myself. I wouldn't compare myself to that. Or like you're out here, you're doing this. This is you. You are doing your stream. It is hundred percent yours. Nobody else should be influencing it, it at all. Mm-hmm. But it is. It does. Twitch kind of makes it this numbers game. They do. And I would much rather have a smaller amount of people that I can focus on chat and just keep building these relationships. Though a lot, it's a can be a parasocial relationship. However, mm-hmm. it's still, you're, you're connecting with more people and you're, you're making these long-term connections. Like there are people I see 
in the stream from like right at the beginning and they're still here and like that uh, like i know there are streams that i've watched when i first started in on twitch that i just don't watch anymore and yeah. through, through no fault of theirs it's just maybe direction changed a little bit so it's and it's hard to find those as well where you, you or if you come back into a stream and it, maybe you kind of stopped watching because it was the same content that didn't mm-hmm. quite resonate and you see there's not a whole lot of progress. And again, not to, it's a tough thing. It really is. And looking back on where I am and where things have gone, sometimes I'm thinking how, kind of how did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, like I said, I'm, I'm sitting there with my, I'm, I'm sharing images of space, which, albeit, yes, I am aware that a lot of people don't do that on Twitch. Mm-hmm. But again, it could easily be passed over for people who want to go into someone else's chat with like a thousand people watching them play Minecraft. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I played Minecraft once. I dug a trench like eight miles long, and then that was it. I was satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> I think that your outlook is completely on the money. I'm. I, I feel the same way in terms of there's this whole measure of of success on the platform that is very, uh, like you said, very much tied to numbers, which fine, whatever. But I, I think what is more valuable and I, I, I truly believe what's more important is at what level you can connect with the people that are in your channel. And I don't, I, I feel like that's lost on a lot of people. Because people will see, oh, I'm streaming to only 15 people, right? And I don't mean it like that, but that's what people will say. And 15 people is still quite a lot of people. When you when you physically think about it, if you were to take like a classroom and look at, you know, on average 15 to 20 people, that that's that's a whole classroom. And I think people forget about that because of how a lot of this is in, in many ways gamified, right? Where uh, yeah. you get those stats at the end of your stream. You see, you, you know, you had so many uh, unique viewers or you had an average concurrent viewership of whatever. I don't believe that that is as important. So thank you for for pointing that out. And I think that that's something to really stress and, and, and point to and say that's uh, those numbers, they are what they are. But I think what's yeah. more important is, is your ability to do something with those numbers and connect with them on, on some level. Supercomputer asked a, a question in chat. Do you watch your viewer account while you're streaming? I, I have it up there. It says it's part of my metrics, um, but mm-hmm. I don't, I, I, I'll take note. But it also doesn't change the way how I'm presenting. Yeah. It is it, it just gives me an idea of yeah. what's happening. That's pretty much it. Everything out there is if I had three people, if I had thirty people, if I had a hundred people, it's yeah. still the exact same me that you're getting. Yeah. And you you rate in with one person, you rate in with five people, you rate in with a hundred people, you're still getting the exact same appreciation, no matter yeah. what. And because you have chosen this stream, you've chosen to, to spend your time here. Always, always stress that at the end of a stream that I am thanking everybody for their time. It is the one thing we can never, you can never earn any more time back. Definitely. So you have, you have spent this hour, this, these three hours. There have been sometimes I've done, eight hour streams and there are still people that were there from the beginning. And it's like, that's what blows my mind is this is someone is willing to spend that time with you that they're using their, their internet, their broadband, their just their, their, their physical time giving that to you. And that means, you know, to me, emotionally it means way more because clearly there's something interesting happening here. I've been captivating enough. Uh, I haven't been overly, I don't know, I don't, like <laughs> weird. <laughs> Things can get a little weird sometimes on stream. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just the heart of it. It is science communication I like to do. I will happily go off the rails. When people, when, when you as, as a viewer, those of you who are listening, watch someone and you spend that time with that streamer, it's really important to know that whoever you, you chose in that time, it, it's, it's, it's important. It's important to that streamer. It's, it's, uh, it means a lot to folks like us. And, and like Astro Canuck said, whether it's three people or a hundred people who are watching, uh, we, I value that that kind of time so it's it's uh it's something to uh to to shed light on i'd like to to remind people that your time ha as a streamer and your time as a viewer are a hundred percent valuable is there anyone on twitch that really inspires you in terms of how you approach your channel and your content are there people out there that you watch and you're like this is this is something that i really needed to to help me do my thing oh boy it it, it varies there is um like in the early days you're fine i'm dropping a whole bunch of different names out here this is why i asked the, who i started off like because i was in the united kingdom and i was on the time frame of when more australian streamers were on so their prime time was my work day when I was, while i was working from home just having uh twitch on and the, just you know doing the work and lurk we had nutty who has become such a wealth of information on streaming tips and techniques and just how just little things you can do big things you can do to improve the streams yeah and started off with a lot of the basics from from his channel and from his youtube videos and figuring out how this all worked because i had no idea how OBS. on my first obs scene i was chewing up my bandwidth like like it was going bananas <laughs> it was always say you're, you're you're over it's overloaded it's not it's um you're gonna you may have streaming problems and i'm streaming at like 1080p i'm trying to do all this it's like oh, everything has to have animations and it's starting to come down to like less less has to be more like i had five different screens going and like yeah nothing was it was stuttering. I think there's one stream I recorded that my camera was only <laughs> nothing was working. Like I watched this back. I'm like, people watched me. Yeah. This was horrible. So <laughs> check out the dips from, from nutty and ghost in the machine and the warship. Again, two more Australian streamers that I had become familiar with and still watch them. And they're still mm -hmm. doing an amazing job on, on Twitch. Just from that, it's again through different raids of who has been, who is sharing their knowledge of how to improve your stream and then tweaking it to what I do, trying to make as many little nerdy, geeky pop culture references in the stream as, as I can. Yeah. Uh, and just what devices will work, like using a Leoran board and then moving over to Streamer Bot for yeah. what is able to control the, the stream. So it's adding these different elements that would have been instrumental from, from those people and just watching what other people do. Like I said before, of what might, what might work for somebody won't mm -hmm. quite work for you, but then how can I tweak it to make it work for me? I think that's where the, um, the creativity, like I've been, a, I've been a graphic designer for the better part of how old am I now? <laughs> like 25 plus years as a graphic designer. Yeah. So just trying to utilize all that, make as many custom things on here as, uh, as I can. So there, there was the, I'll tell you one thing I picked up from ghost in the machine. He had the Xbox achievement that popped mm. up and it, it quite literally was you type in your thing, a little Xbox thing would pop up from the old 360. So I figured, what can I do? How can I tweak it to mine? How can I do this? Yeah. And trying to figure out how to make the, get the new Xbox or the latest kind of Xbox achievement pop up, make sure that the font was correct. I'm always picky about fonts, graphic designer. Mm -hmm. And how can I make it work so that you have the chance to get a rare reward? Just like how it is in the, in the Xbox games or yeah, yeah. the rare trophies in PlayStation games, things like that. Yeah. 
uh, I've always been an Xbox kid. So it was trying to figure that out, but nobody had this kind of tutorial for it. So it was working with a couple other streamers who were a little more familiar with the inner workings of the Orin board. And I think it took four of us to get it to work. And that was the weirdest collaboration I've ever, <laughs> I've ever done. Just to, get, just to get the maths work right. Yeah. So you had a one in 10 chance to get this rare reward. And then now I've added lights so that you know you'll get the green light for the regular or the red light for the for the rare and and it's just one of those things where you how who do you know how to reach out to if it doesn't exist yet yeah and i'm not saying that what i'm doing didn't truly exist but just trying to get the maths to work how to get the access to the knowledge that will make it work right because yes like and not being so you don't want to gatekeep your information, but you also yeah. don't want to give away the sauce right away because you might give someone the idea, oh, I want to do this. Yeah. And then there's a chance that maybe they go off and do it without. Yeah. But again, that's everything that happens on here. There's there's some form of inspiration you've seen on another stream. You want to try it. You know, it's going to happen. So it is just trying to figure out. Um, sometimes, yeah, figuring things out on your own, but there is also some people that will that are more than happy to help out because most like it's all different streams. You, you can't take away an audience that you never had from someone else. I agree. I agree with you in the, the whole, that, that secret, that secret sauce, like what makes your stuff stand out versus someone else who may be doing the same thing. And I think that's, what's, what's really important when, when you take those ideas or those tools and widgets or whatever's out there. Right. And, and oh. applying them, I think, I think the knowledge is valuable. What is most important, in my opinion, is whether it's common knowledge or something completely obscure and, and like a random piece of info that only a handful of people have, like making the Xbox achievement pop up work on your stream in a way that you want. I think it's really about how you as the streamer use it. Right. And I, I have to commend you that I just love the production value of your stream and not just how clean and well put together it is, but also just the ideas that you have. I think, I mean, it's clear that you're a designer in that you pay attention to where, where and when things pop up, how they look on screen, how they all look together. I, uh, I in many times have, have noticed how your stuff comes in, where it goes out, how everything looks when everything's going on at once. So uh, kudos to you for that. And I, I just have to call you out for that. This, I, I think you, you. Your, your, your stuff is fantastic and I think it's only going to get better. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Nutty as well. In the same vein of who inspires you and perhaps the answers are similar, but who would you want to collaborate with on Twitch? Oh, that's a... Uh... I don't know. You know, I, okay, here's the, here's the deal. My, in, in my mind, first of all, I'm, I'm giving you the massive kudos to what you do here with your, you to your interviews. I think you are an incredible, you're incredibly interviewing. Oh, thank you. I don't, I wouldn't know where to start with a collaboration. I've sure. had some people join in on the stream before. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I feel like sometimes it kind of takes away from the overall stream because I am focusing on, one person mm -hmm. and that had never been like the what i do on for for my streams mm -hmm. so when i do have someone on every now and then i'm always worried about okay am i paying enough attention to chat are they going to get bored with what we're doing and most of the time it is no we, we loved it we thought it was great it was cool to see somebody else to, to stray away i would probably in terms of a, of a collaboration I feel doing something along the lines of Lego would be fun and having like a group of people doing something. I don't know what, uh, there was a, there was a, a rough idea of doing like a charity build. Uh, the first one, first one finished wins and then would, uh, everybody below would be donating X amount to their charity and then kind of trickling down from there. Uh, space, space related i think it would be good to do a virtual star party where we had a few people with their telescopes and just taking sharing their images from around the world or 
depending like because obviously there are different targets in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Yeah. It has been done before. There have been uh, some live streams done on more on YouTube. The hard part is predicting the weather. I think being able to have an you get enough people together, chances are that maybe 50% might have decent weather to be able to share images. There is there I've met a lot of people in the telescope industry who could probably help make this work. There are some people in California. There's uh, Dustin Gibson from OPT Telescopes. Uh, we got uh, Canadian. There is uh, Steve from Ontario Telescope and Accessories, who would be more than willing to help on something like this. And you know, it's there are a, f- there are a lot of other people on, like I said, on Twitch who do astronomy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there is, again, it's the the different presentations that people have, and. This is where I feel why I started getting into the Lego is because yes, it's cool to see an image of space roll in, but with astrophotography, one image doesn't always make an astro image because there could be uh, a satellite rolling through. There could be noise in the camera from taking a long, long exposure and you don't see that the target could be dim. Mm-hmm. So it's being able to get an interesting enough image together that people are like, Oh, that's cool. That's pretty interesting. That's neat. Never, never seen that before. So it is. I would really, really have to think about who. Think like Az Pinoy and Amish Ace, Zach Rutledge, and uh, Pan Fred. Yeah, Fred is awesome. Yep. Who are who have that energy, yep. you know, and they're they're fun to hang out with, and again, that's in terms of a secret sauce, that's something you can never give away because they just that have that inherent talent to be able to engage in a, 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 a crowd. So something like that, I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, <clears throat> I do have, I was actually gifted the, um, speaking of what a lot of them do with their, with their tights, their TikTok leggings. <laughs> uh, I do, I, I do have a pair of TikTok leggings. I've been sent a pair of leggings. So debuting that at a secret time, um, <laughs> a secret design. Yeah. I will be, I, I have been inducted into the, the brotherhood of the traveling TikTok pants. So we'll, uh, we'll have those in some capacity. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Keep, yeah, keep an eye is. out. Keep an eye out for a TikTok leggings stream from Astro Connect. So there we go. I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know you can. (laughs) Nah, things like that. I'm, I'm fine with that. Like I said, it's, you gotta be fearless on a lot of these things. Yeah. We, uh, we're talking before the stream about the whole, the whole thing about the show is, is really to, to discuss, what it's like to do what we do when it comes to creating and streaming and building content in a community and things like that. And and you brought up a really important thing that we don't really get to talk about much, at least openly, I think. And uh, I wanted to, I wanted to broach the subject of, of critiquing ourselves and critiquing those around us in comparison and, and what that means to be a creator while being on your own journey. What are your thoughts on that? Or rather, what do you think as a creator thinking about that sort of thing? How, how do you approach that? It's, I think it's, it still feels like it could be a tough one because like you said, everybody is on their own journey. We, we can't be comparing ourselves to anyone else. It is largely, you know, it can be different, different tastes for everybody. It's one of the things like, how do you, how do you share success Mm-hmm. without making others feel like maybe they haven't been able to do something like that. How do you share your failures without sounding like you're whining when that's, you know, it, it's more of, okay, here's what, here's what has gone wrong. How can we, how can we bring this up? How can it be helped? And again, the kind of is aside from looking inward, there aren't many avenues. Like there really, there's tons of videos online of how to become a better streamer, but that doesn't always apply to everybody. And I think it is having that focused thing to talk about in a completely non-judgmental way 
in a bad way or in a good way. It's just to be able to communicate with somebody else who is in the same boat because I will talk to my wife about what I do and she has a totally different uh, critical analysis of what I do. And then there's all these other questions like, okay, then it can be like, okay, well, it doesn't, it can't work like that. We have to do it like this. And, you know, there's the why comes up and it, it's, there's only so much input you can get <clears throat> from those who are outside of streaming. Not like it's like right. some secret brethren for what we, what we do here, but it is, you know, between this, between Twitch and YouTube and um, I won't even, won't even mention TikTok right now because I, don't even know how that works. Um, <laughs> it is. It thinks even like Facebook. Like you are, you're out here. You're doing this, and yeah, a lot of people are. You know, you're monetizing your channel, and I think that can also be a very touchy subject for people because you don't want to see, you don't want to give away numbers like that. But at the same time, you want to be able to find out what's going wrong, what has what has gone right, and it is just being able to share those ideas, share that, um, those successes and just wonder what can go, what, what's next. You know, if things are going bad, what's next, things are going yeah. good. How can we make it better? So it's just being able to openly talk about things like that. That can be, it can be difficult because some, some one, one's person's success may not be the same person's success. And you kind of, you, you want to, you want to be sensitive enough to people, but at the same time, how else can we start to grow without knowing where things are going right, where things are going wrong? I think I think it's really important to underscore this because whether you're a, a creator who's listening to this or whether you are someone who is involved with the community but not necessarily a, a creator or streamer yourself, it's certainly something that... I don't think is openly talked about whether it's sharing your struggles with fellow streamers or or sharing, like you said, the successes that you're having uh, mostly in, in concern of, you know, everyone's, everyone's in a different place. Everyone has taken a different route to get where they're at. Right. It's certainly difficult to uh, share that. How do how do you suppose a creator can find not just find others to talk to about this, but how, how do they navigate those different challenges? If I had that answer, if I <laughs> had that exact answer, uh, I would, I would, I would make a YouTube video about it. Right. No, it's, it can be tough. And it really, it comes down to who, who have you made relationships with mm -hmm. online yeah. and, you know, can you, you know, can you start talking to the, your, your friends online? You know, it has been, and it's tough to find out who is in it for almost unattainable, massive internet fame. Right. And who is having a good time and would just like to help people out. It's fine. It's, it can take a while to, to develop those relationships. Like I said, it, it's you may never know exactly who you can talk to, which feels bad because I would be more than happy to, to, to talk with people. What, what can help, what can, what can work. And I've, we kind of started doing that a little with a few people early on in streaming with the, what idea could work, what could work for someone else, what wouldn't necessarily work for me in that way, just to help give a push. But I think when it comes down to like the numbers, that people can be sensitive about that. And it's like I never mean to 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 put anyone down or uh, compare anybody's success against um, success and failures against my own. It really is just trying to find out who yeah you know, who can just who can you talk to, and it's like we kind of need like a streamer support team <laughs> in some weird way, you know. Uh, yeah. Because no, nobody has, who has the answers to all of this. It's it's totally you. May, somebody may find lightning in a bottle. Somebody might be you know maybe taking a while to get even to that that fifty fifty viewer or the fifty follower threshold. You know, it's it, it's without knowing where to start, it can make it a, a difficult thing. It's definitely challenging, uh, regardless of where someone's at 
in their their streaming and their creation uh, career. I think that for me, when I got started, uh, I was not lucky enough to have many people to talk to about it early, early on. It wasn't until I was maybe six to nine months into my journey that I even found peers that I, I connected with and could actually talk to about a lot of that stuff. And I, I think that's what's really at the center of that question of how, how, how do I get the support that I need and give the support that I need to others that that might need it within the creation space. Cause you know, you, you, you still need people who, who are in it. And what I recommend for a lot of people is, and I, like you just said, it's very tough to do, but it's certainly about finding those people that you, uh, you feel like you can have those conversations with. Maybe some people you, like you look at those who are, who are partnered and who've been doing this for for years, and maybe you feel like you can't talk to them, but there may be the, the probably the possibility is that they'd be more than happy at least hear you out and just give a little bit of insight. Like you, not everybody's going to have the exact answer. Yeah, for people, of what's going to be your, you know, your your key to success, and it is just kind of sharing the moments when you know things were down for me when this happened or things were. Yeah, you know, I, I was very happy when when this occurred. So here's what I did to capitalize on it. Yeah, try here. Maybe here's X, Y, Z. You could give a you give a try to. So, and then it's like, oh well, this happened. How sorry that this occurred. How about we? You think about trying this next time. And it's just like I said, everybody's on their own journey, but you also still want to be able to. We're all in our own little boats, but we're in the same ocean. You know, we're all trying to. Everybody's trying to do what they can on Twitch. Everybody wants to be able to to share what they love, and hopefully that resonates with with some people. You know, it's like no secret sauce. I mean, there's only so far that you can go without having to reach out for help. You know, I think that's that's like one of the more important things that we could somehow have organized with people because not everybody has all the answers. I think is I think it's all about finding that support network, right? Getting you know, getting getting those those fellow streamers who are doing this the same things and hopefully you build up enough trust with them and comfort and familiarity with those other people to share those things with. I think that's really what for me has really helped over the years, right? And yeah. uh and and some of those people a lot further along on their uh, streaming careers than I am. Some of those people are completely brand new, in, in, relatively speaking. Uh, although I consider myself now a dinosaur when it comes to Twitch, uh, <laughs> having been been on the the uh, platform streaming for like almost six years. So for you, what's in in the near future for Astro Canuck, the channel and the community? Uh, in the near future, uh, what we want to do again to uh, open up, to reopen kind of uh, connections to our friends in the UK, mm-hmm. as I had spent the first year, first year and a half of my my streaming career in the United Kingdom, so I was on that in the Greenwich Mean time zone. So there was a lot of people in in in, in the UK, in uh, in Europe, and um, farther out who had joined in because my time zone worked for a lot of people. And when I moved back to Canada, it was a fairly massive shift in time zones because I'll usually start at you know, like later in the evening. Sometimes, well, obviously right now we don't get sunset until about 10 30 at night here. So that kind of gets into like four in the morning for a lot of people and yeah. pretty much in bed between three and four, pretty much nothing happens. You're sleeping. So they'll, they'll wake up, the stream is done. You kind of miss out on those connections. What I'd like to be doing, what I will be doing is adding a solar telescope element so we can start to look at the sun safely. So <laughs> we're, we're going to be walking outside of the deck and looking at, oh, wow. Thanks for clarifying. That, that, that burns. <laughs> it is adding that, that solar telescope element. So 
we can I can have daytime streams here in Canada, which would be in the same kind of old time zone uh, time frame that I was in uh, in the UK and Europe, and just be able to reconnect with a lot of people because you know it was a you know five hours can actually still be a fairly massive shift in yeah. uh, in what we do. So being yeah. able to do that and just adding some different elements to the streams in terms of what well, I actually what I recently added was a Tuesday stream where it was kind of dedicated more for uh, for artwork and, and crafting because I am I, I when I went back to we're jumping around here when I went back to university yeah. uh, in my late 30s I really got back in I really got into creating things with my hands again instead of just using pixels and I really enjoyed that element of making something with my hands, drawing, just taking pencil to paper was a huge thing because I hadn't done that in ages. Mm. So dedicating a Tuesday stream more for the arts, more for something art, art, arts and crafts essentially, but keeping it astronomy based was something that was recently been added and being able to kind of couple that up with adding a daytime stream is just doing what I can to be more active online and just be able to meet more, meet more people and hopefully see some, some people previously who weren't able to tune in because of, uh, because of the time zones. Excellent. It'll be good to, to get back with some of those uh, previous viewers and, and those who came around early on. Is that is that on the calendar at all in terms of when you want to do that? Or is that kind of something that'll happen at some point soon? Uh, that'll happen at some point soon. It depends when the stock is in the shop. Um, because that has been like the biggest crutch that I felt I've kind of had is we've been using almost the same equipment for for two years. And mm -hmm. that was largely because supply chain, like things yeah. were either selling out immediately or they just never were in stock. Like there are some things that have been announced from companies that have yet to really start showing up in places. Mm -hmm. Like there's a little portable a telescope mount from Skywatcher that they announced like months ago, but they still don't have, they just only recently started trickling in, in very, very select locations, but it's kind of, it's hard to get that equipment and it's hard to, uh, utilize that because if I if I can't get my hands on different telescope equipment, then I can't properly offer up my opinion on what yeah. we do, or at least my not even so much my opinion, my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything, what, whenever we're talking about about astrophotography on the stream, is it, my opinion is going to differ greatly from anybody. I will tell you about my experience, how. I engaged with this product and how I got on with using this camera or this telescope mount or this filter. And then you kind of take your own path in that direction, mm. but without, you know, utilizing different uh, pieces of equipment, I rely on my community for that. There are a great deal of people who are into astrophotography who join in and we all have different types of telescopes, different types of mounts. So, in that regard for building, <clears throat> pardon me, for building a community has been incredibly important so that we can, if someone comes in, who's a, who's brand new to astro imaging or even just astronomy, just getting a telescope and what's, what's the best telescope is what comes up most frequently. There's no right answer to that one. It is right. the one you use most often. So it kind of comes down. What's your goal? It's just those, um, those experiences that are starting to get back into the regular rotation is what uh, is what I'm looking forward to is being able to talk about more different types of astrophotography gear with, with confidence and not just kind of re relying on what other people have reviewed because you can Google that. Yeah. I would at least like to be able to help people out based off of my, my experience as best as we can. You are up to some fantastic stuff over there. Keep up the, the wonderful work and and as someone who does uh astrophotography and astronomy you know keep keep up the wonderful work i love i love what you're doing i love that you're also bringing in lego too to uh supplement the content that you've got and 
I love it all, Tom. Uh, now, now that you've done this interview with me, now you now that you've done a crossing the streams, is there anyone that you haven't seen on the show that you would like to see on a future episode? Oh, um, obviously, what would who have? I'm trying to go like someone who is brand new, almost like somebody who hasn't, who's barely been on the on the Twitch scene, and. I don't want to say like the, the childhood innocence of what's to come. <laughs> here. There, there's definitely quite a few new new people who have been appearing on the scene lately. And that, that's what I like as well, is that a lot of people are um, are trying it out. You'll, you'll see you, you'll see members of other communities who have just been chatting for the longest time mm -hmm. and they will get into they'll start getting into streaming and just mm -hmm. trying it out. For the fresh take on a lot of things, um, I think Ray RS twenty five Enigma Gal mm -hmm. have been a few people I've watched and just seeing them in their you know, still very 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 fresh on Twitch, yeah. Uh, who are who are having a, who are enjoying what they do as well. Like you see that with them as well. And I think some somebody who is like I said fresh faced on here just to kind of get that initial almost shock reaction to how hopefully how supportive the brick building community can be. Mm -hmm. you, know, you see a lot of people who have joined in. Not so much that that's like a secret sauce to Twitch. Like you just, you're networking as best as you can. And without saying you're streaming, how do you say you're a streamer? Yeah. You know, how else are you going to let people know that? But when you see members of the brick building community who you, who have become, you, you get that comfort, the, the comfort with, uh, with people. Mm -hmm. And in the good way of mentioning that you, that pe a lot of people don't mind when you mention that you're starting to stream. Yeah. In uh, just like the most, I don't want to say the most diplomatic way, but there are other, there are more tactful ways of saying that you're, you're streaming without saying you're streaming. Do you have any good examples on how you would say that? Uh, well, first of all, uh, well, as soon as we, uh, as soon as we finish this, I'm going to go start a stream. Uh, take care, everybody. That's, uh, that's always a good one. <laughs> it's, man, it's also you, you kind of have to rely on people to bring it up almost organically. Yeah. It, there's, it's very difficult. And sometimes, like, not to be, not to criticize screen names, it, it can be like your screen name also needs to be a little bit of an identifier. If yeah. you are streaming, there's something. Uh, that you can tell who is just what who just enjoys watching Twitch and doesn't uh, who isn't always streaming, but who has more of a streamer name that you'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, I wonder what they do, how are they, what, what are they up to? But it is just uh, sometimes dropping little hints, reacting to certain things that people will say. But I think ultimately it kind of comes down to people who have to bring it up to you. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's got to it's got to be always done with tact. Yeah, definitely. Which a lot of people, not a lot, no, sorry, not a lot of people. That some people that join in don't really have, but we we can't police every single person that jumps in chat. Yeah, Astro Connect. Where can ev anyone find you on the internet? Well, aside from Facebook, which is the Astro Canuck, I am Astro Canuck on Twitter, on Instagram, on the Twitch which you are watching ish at the moment live, but on YouTube, I am Astro Canuck as well. YouTube is pretty much my VODs being uploaded. And I always say I was going to do more videos. That's mm. a totally different topic of conversation for, for <laughs> editing videos. As much as I've done in the past, I have like one edited video. And that was when I smashed the Lego space shuttle. That was the only one I sat there and edited. Yeah. But that, there's one other thing is the the confidence i have with just being able to convey a tutorial yeah. which i think a lot of people want for astrophotography look i've been no. doing this for almost five years and i still don't feel like i have any kind of authority on telling people <laughs> how <laughs> to do something sure but but you but, you you can speak to your experience which you have in the in the past right Yes, naturally, but then I got to edit all of that. That's why. Yeah. That's also why I kind of did Twitch, is because it's live, it's dynamic. I don't have to yeah. edit it after I hit stop, and that's it. 
<laughs> that's well, true. Kind of it, but mostly. Yeah. I, I mean that that's the bare minimum. So there you go. <laughs> what parting words do you have for those that are listening to this episode? Oh, what parting? Oh my goodness. Um, Hmm. First of all, growing older is mandatory. Growing up is optional. So when anybody says you're too old to play with Lego, they can go stuff it. Whether you're building bricks or you're looking up at the sky, there is always something that is going to be much larger than what we do here. And not to like wax philosophical about astronomy, but there is so much out there that we don't know about that we're going to be learning more about. There are new observatories that are going to be placed up in orbit. We have seen their success with JWST and those images that have come through that there is so much more out there that we never knew and absolutely looking forward to what is coming. It blows my mind. Space blows my mind on a regular basis. And I hope that somebody else gets the same experience when I can show them a picture of a galaxy or show them a star cluster. And that's what we love to do. That's what I want to do. That is my sole purpose. I'm, I'm not here to change the world. I'm here to share the universe. That's me. 